How's it going? It's Halloween, y'all. And the kids in the neighborhood have started putting their pumpkins out. So obviously, I gotta show them up. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna cut it. Not quite as sophisticated as I was going for. And in true Cranktown fashion, why spend a day trying to improve my skills when I can spend 10 days making a robot to do it for me? It's worth mentioning that Stuff Made Here already did this. And it is a little intimidating to take on a project that he's already done because that guy's basically a super genius. But I'm feeling confident today. So. The base of the machine is going to be made using these surprisingly stout Lazy Susans. So I'm going to be sticking one inside the other, Ugh. like so. And then we have our two axes of movement, and our gantry will ride on the inside of this guy. So to start, I need to somehow rigidly mount this guy to this guy. Look at that, it's like a little banana spaceship. Wow! <laughs> I just, I can't stop it. So we got these two guys, and these attached to our Lazy Susan, like so. Now, we can attach this guy into here. Now, we need to start working on our gantry. This will be the plate that everything mounts to. I actually did some planning for this. Surprise, surprise. And in order to have the spindle pointing right at the center of our circles, we need quite a slope on there. It's our little skate ramp here. Gets a ball screw. Then I've gone right ahead and attached linear rails to the gantry on these little standoffs. That way we can get it all lined up just perfect. And just like that. We've got our Z-axis. Now then, we gotta take this heavy old thing and stick it on here. Not gonna lie, not the most rigid thing in the world and very heavy, but I think we can make it work. Before moving forward with figuring out how to drive this thing, these paint buckets just won't do. Oh my lord. Well. We've already got the bones of our machine together. Now the problem, this thing's super heavy. So we gotta figure out how to drive it. The obvious solution is gears, but it's the weekend and the metal getting spot is closed. So I went ahead and cut some gears out on the laser out of Delrin. The bolts are just there to hold the layers together. I've glued them together, but we've got this guy that goes on the machine. Oh! And this guy that goes on our stepper. That little laser did a pretty good job. Now, I have no idea if these are gonna be able to withstand the forces that they're gonna need to for this to work, but I'll be damned if I don't try. Well, see if this thing works. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. Eh? No problem! I haven't adjusted any settings, I just plugged it in and ran the setup wizard on Linux CNC. Hence the awful holding noise. But, dude, Delrin, huh? I, I'm still in disbelief. Whatever, I'll take what I can get. Let's carry on. With a wild success on our Y axis, I'm just gonna do the same thing on the X. So, uh... Bang! I don't remember where I put my hand. We're just about there. Now then, the last two things we gotta do here is mount the spindle. Easy. And then we need our little pumpkin holster. So, here is a torture device. The idea here being I can spike the pumpkin onto here and then on the inside use this little three-hold washer diddly and tighten it down on top of there. So, we'll see if that works. Otherwise, this thing is basically done. I'm gonna get it wired up and running, and I'll be right back. Ta-da! Got it all up and running. We got full control over this thing. The 
Spindle's kind of scary. Oh. Oh. Spindle popped my GFI. Uh. I don't remember what the last shot was. Probably something breaking. Uh, I don't know. Well, I fixed whatever that was. Now, we have a fully functioning CNC machine. Look at that thing go. Now, we face two problems. The first being, I have this set up as a linear axis system. So, the computer thinks it's flat, which is gonna cause some funky warping issues. But I'm not too worried about that. I, I, I'll deal with that later. The next problem is this thing will do great on a perfect sphere, but this isn't a perfect sphere. And the way I'm gonna solve that is surface mapping. For surface mapping, basically we tell the machine to probe the surface at a bunch of known points. We can then use the information from these points to approximate the real life position of the surface and apply offsets to the Z position in our G code accordingly. This is my very professional probe. It is a fridge door button. <laughs> this goes into the collet like so. Let's probe this pumpy. All right, I've got my adjusted G-code file. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Oh God. You can see as it sweeps across the x-axis, the Z is moving slightly according to our offset. So, seems like it's working. Pretty neat. It's not terrible. I think I definitely need to get a new software for writing the G-code because this rastering is just not beautiful and probably also a smaller bit. But this is all I could get in town, so. For now, I'll take it. One problem with this, this is supposed to be a Halloween video. This isn't spooky enough. One second. Now that is spooky. So, uh, not great. So I've messed around with this a little bit more and I think I've gotten to a place where I like. What I want to be doing is cutting variable depth maps into pumpkins to influence the way light passes through and, you know, get some pretty cool images out of it. What I've landed on is mesh cam to write the G-code and then G-code ripper from Scorchworks to do the probing and adjustments. I'll take any chance I can to shout that guy out because he does incredible work all for free for CNC machines. So links in the doobly-doo. But without further ado, let's cut some lithophanes. That's how you're supposed to cut a jack-o'-lantern, right? The whole lithophane thing seems to have worked out pretty well here. And you can even see the shading on the pumpkin. So, I'm happy with this. Ooh. Yeah, there's gonna be pumpkin in the shop forever now. Guys, this is pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie, I just kept cutting pumpkins and kind of stopped filming. But, let me give you the grand tour of what I have cut. Here we have an anime girl. I kind of just googled grayscale depth maps and this was one of the things that came up. But I think this one turned out pretty awesome. You can really see the detail in her hair. Here we have a penny. That's what pennies are supposed to be shaped like. Right? This is my circular axes coming to bite me in the butt. It's okay though. Now this one I like a lot because with the lights on, it looks awful. But then we shut them off. Look at that. It's Mr. Beast's next banger video. I think the whole lithophane effect really worked out well on his face here. The camera's trying to autofocus on it because it thinks it's a face. Pretty stoked on this one. For this one, I tried to find a spooky image. The detail isn't great, but it definitely looks spooky. And you can definitely make out the figure on it. Now, one final challenge I'd like to take on. Mr. Stuff, if you will set forth a benchmark in his video. I want to see how my guy does. And for the grand reveal... Dude... That turned out sick. 
it actually looks three-dimensional. Now, I don't know how it looks on camera, but in real life, I'm seeing cubes. That is pretty dang cool, man. You can definitely see my circular axes messing with the final image. This is a straight line on the computer. <laughs> but whatever, man. The, the benefit of a machine made for making art is it doesn't have to be perfect. And overall, I think you get the impression of what's supposed to be going on here. I'm pleased with it. Guys, this was so much fun. Like, I'm not even mad that my entire shop is covered in pumpkin, which does not come up easy once it's dried. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got for you today. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. I'm gonna leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and Thank you for watching.